morning. morning. I've got a straddler. <laughs> morning, morning. It's like Euston Station, isn't it? <laughs> I've never been to Euston Station, but I think it's, yeah. Is it worse? I'll just give people time to get in and get settled. It's okay, don't worry about me. I'll stand here till you're ready. Morning. Just remember, it's not me you're keeping waiting. It's the Lord. It's a g- I know. If I'm going to have to put up with Eklin, yeah, I'm having, I'm having charges. I'm going to be paid for this job. If I'm going to be Eckled, I want to be paid for it. I'm only going to be Eckled if it's good Eklin. I don't like it if it's not. I think me and Joel are quite okay because we're not same wavelength. Anyway, besides all that, good morning, everybody. <laughs> we'll get our, we'll get our heads right now, and we'll get back to what we're here for, to praise God. Our God is a great God. Psalm 146 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord with all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord is God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, hallelujah, I love that second bit. Because that means I know that you're all you women. We're going to start this morning. I'm going to sing. We're going to we start our worship um, with a song that maybe I don't think we've had it for a while. But um, we're going to sing. Come, now is the time to worship. Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are before your God Come One day every time you confess you are God One day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you Now is 
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God, Lord, we come this morning to praise and worship you. Lord, we pray that this morning that all our burdens, Father God, are lifted as we worship your holy name this morning. Lord, you know each and every one of us. We all come from different backgrounds. But as that song says, come just as you are. Father God, we are before you this morning, just as we are, each in different places within our walk of faith with you. But Father God, we trust that you have us in your hand and that you watch over us and that you guide us and that, Father God, you hold us close. In that wonderful name of Jesus, amen. amen. And we're going to sing, You Never Let Go.
Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, we are thankful that you never let go of us. Oh, Jesus. By your grace, Father God. You are an awesome man, Father. You are an awesome God. A wonderful Savior. Precious Redeemer. Lord, you save us. You keep us strong. Um, I, had to, I had to go down to Matalan, somewhere off the parkway this week. I'm always picking up parcels for tomorrow. Yeah, it's Christmas. It happens. Um, and as I'm going, as we're parking in there, and, and I've parked up, and we're walking around to go and have a look at... It's on bargains now, isn't it? Yeah, on bargains. And there's a tent in the corner. And we're walking, there's a pair of shoes outside the tent flap. The flap's open, and, there's, and we walk past. And Elsie may sort of go doing this, like, you know, because kids, they're more nosier than what I am. But it wasn't until I was coming back out that I actually walked past and then noticed that there was a young couple sleeping rough in this tent. And I just thought, do you know what? By the grace of God, go I. Because that could happen to any of us at the flick of a switch. I know that from my brother, my, my uh, Christopher, he had a split from his wife and then a split from his girlfriend. And all of a sudden, he just ended up living out of his car. Um, he shared our sofa for a few days. But when you're an household of women, and even though he's my brother, we've got an household of women in my house. Yeah, the Archie's the only male in it. Um, and he said, it's awkward when you've suddenly got a man in there. Even though he's your brother, you're thinking, hang on, that's my bathroom. I'm waiting to go. Come on. Um, and it was sort of quite difficult, even though we'd lived together for many years. And he, we managed to get him, well, our Lisa managed to get him a flat. But it just shows how thin that line is. We don't think it can happen to us. We don't think it can happen to our family. And it can. But do you know what? I prayed on that and I know that our God saved him from a life of one being living on the streets. And we're going to sing, Our God Saves. Amen. <laughs> In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing. With you lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves. There is hope in your name, morning turn. Songs of praise, our God saves, our God saves. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name. Call on our Savior, fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering. As your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves. Yeah. 
God. Our God saves. He's a mighty God. I still remember the moment that God saved me. The moment that he showed himself to me and came into my life. And I must admit from that moment to now, my life has never been the same. It's had its ups and downs. It's had its aches and pains. It's had its scares. It's had its joys. Do you know what? Our God saves. Our God is a great God. Our God is a good God. Our God needs to reach out and touch the people in this community. Our God needs his spirit to just flow free. Our prayers must be not just for family and friends, but for the neighborhood that we are in. Our church has been blessed throughout these past few years. I remember standing here and there's only been three in front of me. But praise God, this church is in a good place. We are now ready to grow a great church. And we're going to sing our next, we'll do our next three all together. We can do that, can't we? We've got enough energy, yeah? Amen? We're not old ones in here yet, are we? No. We can do this. We're going to take our next three songs straight after each other. Amen. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Great. 
Of my 
Take your seats, I know I've kept you standing quite a while. Before we do communion this morning, I'd just like to finish 
what I started earlier when I was on about my brother. And the moral of that was that as family, we came together and we got things sorted. As a church, we're family. We can get together and we can get things sorted. We know it can be done. We've got proof coming on the back garden. I would never have dreamed in a million years that we could have a Sunday school room all of our own. Yeah, whoop, whoop, I like that, Vicky. You see, at least somebody else is excited as I am. And he's going to have eating, apparently. What we'll need is in winter. I mean, we might be, you, know, you might feel a bit, bit of a chill in here, but we will be as snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> we'll be thinking about you. No, it's just nice for family to get together. And that's what this represents before us this morning. Our communion is family coming together at the Lord's table. We should never come here lightly. We should always make sure that our heart is right. And if it isn't, it's okay to let the communion pass you by. God won't judge you for that. He'll honor you for that. And he'll put right what is wrong within you. Sometimes we can take communion just because it's handed to us. We need to make sure that we are in the right place. Our church is growing. We've got youngsters running around. Do you know what? It's great. I'm stood here and my, my, my nerves are tingling because I know that at any moment, Elsie May could quite easily come and stand up here beside me. And so could Paisley for that matter. But praise to God that we've got a church that is growing. And we've got children in here that need to be nurtured and loved. Not by their parents, but by us all. That's what this table represents. The love of Jesus, of what he gave for us, so that we could have a life to live and live to the full. I wonder if um, Joy and Mags and Vicky could come and help with communion this morning. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself.
We got video news. Hello, good morning and welcome to Musborough Ealing Church. This is video news and this is everything to do with the life of a church. So coming up this week, prayer meeting is back on on Tuesday via Zoom at 6.30. Please, I want to encourage you to join us if you are able to. If you have any prayer requests, please let myself know. It would be our honour to pray for you. So that's Tuesday via Zoom at 6.30. Also on Tuesday, we have worship workshop back in the building at seven o'clock. If once again, if worship is of interest to you, can I encourage you to come along to this? Can I encourage you to be part of it? If you want to learn an instrument or you can play an instrument, please come along. This is worship workshop at seven o'clock on Tuesday. And then on Friday, at 9am we have toy library back which is always a great time please continue to pray for the team continue to pray for them as they just reach out into the community as they bless the community with toy library so that's toy library friday at 9am so this is just to give you a heads up that next week we will take up our missions offering for this month. Thank you so much to everybody who gave last month. Can I just remind you though that this is a missions offering that's to bless those missionaries that are around the world that are reaching out to many people sharing their faith but this is also an offering that's on top of a general offering this is if you are able to this is not instead of a general offering this is as well as so please can i encourage you even if it's just a couple of pounds here or there i know it'd be a real blessing to those missionaries so that's missions offering next sunday thank you in a few weeks time it will be sunday for 10th of november just want to give you a heads up that as usual we will be doing our remembrance service sunday and that will also include going down to saint mark's and going there first and then coming for our own service here so just wanted to give you a heads up with that that will be happening i will give more details out to you very soon for sunday the 10th of november so it's finally here it's the moment i know you've all been waiting for the last couple of weeks with video news was it going to be this week well it is guess what church yes you are right christmas is coming we are back the countdown is back we are only 73 days away that feels ridiculously close, doesn't it? 73 days away till Christmas. Why am I sharing that? Well, we've got some great things coming up this Christmas. On the 3rd of November, Sunday the 3rd of November, we will be launching the Toy Appeal. Many of you have been involved in this for many, many years, but just for the new people amongst us, what we do is we are supporting a charity in Rotherham who, that's run by a lady, lovely lady called Anne and her elves and they reach out to as many people as they can, to as many children as they can to give them a toy, to bless them with a toy that they just might not get on Christmas Day and it's a real blessing to them and we work really hard in trying to support them and we are going to be launching those names what happens is you get a tag it'd be a name it'd be their age it'd be what toy they are hoping for and we go out and we buy it and we then bring it back and we pray over them as well so we are going early with this because we've got a lot of names to do we are going for the most names we've ever gone for in my time of being here at the church, over 50 names, and I believe we can do that. So I'm really looking forward to that. Sunday, the 3rd of November, we will be launching the Toy Appeal. And of course, Saturday, the 23rd of November, I already told you to get that date in your diaries. We have our Christmas craft fair back really looking forward to this has been such a success over the years we we've i know vicky's working hard already she's um 
chatting with people, getting stalls in, trying to think of new ideas and new ways that we can just continue to reach this community. This isn't just a fun day for us to put on, but this is a day where we can bless the community. This is a day where we can be part of the community. This is a day where we can go, we love you and we want to bless you. So can I encourage you not only just to pray for it, but also to get involved. At the back, you will find this sign-up sheet, and we have a coffee shop to cover, we've got a cake store to cover, we've got Father Christmas helpers to cover, and, and um, tidying up at the end, that's a real big one, because we are tired by the end of the day. If you can help in any way, please go and sign up. If you are wanting to know more information, please speak to Vicky. She will happily chat you through with you. Pray for this. Sign up for it. Be part of it. Saturday the 23rd of November, Christmas Craft Fair. And as I always say, you might want to go back and look at some of these dates and these times. Go to our website. This video news will be on there, as well as all the other details, as well as all the other links and things you need to know about the life of church. Otherwise, let's keep expanding, equipping, evolving and extending. God bless. leading us. First time I've been booed before I've even started to preach. That, that's a new one. <laughs> there we go. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to turn to the book of Luke chapter 21. And we're going to be approaching that in a moment. just want to say thank you to everybody who's been praying for Daisy. She's doing well. She's hobbling along. <laughs> Bless her. Um, for those who were here a couple of years ago, you might remember I did um, a series on going up the mountain. And I started that series with an uh, illustration of me walking down a hill and falling over. Do you remember that, those who were there? Well, guess what? It was the same hill that Daisy fell over. So we're going to put a banner up there that says Whitmalls are banned from going up this hill, especially down it, because we seem to just don't come down a hill, we just slide down a hill, which is wonderful, isn't it? God is good. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just come before you now, Lord, and we thank you that we've had time to worship you. Lord, we thank you that we, we've been able to declare you are a great God. We've been able to declare that we worship you. We've been able to declare, Father God, that we give you all of our lives. And Lord, as we hear your word now, will you challenge us? Will you equip us? Will you help us to hear you, Lord, Father God? That none of these will be my words, but they'll be your words impacting our hearts, our souls and minds this morning. Would you bless the Sunday schools? Would you have your hands upon them, Lord? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for them. Bless each and every child and young person and leader that are in those rooms now, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to be challenged this morning? No? Okay, it's going to get awkward. <laughs> because it's good to be challenged, isn't it? And this one, I have found a challenge for myself as well. I not just to write in it, but what I'm going to say. Because sometimes we just have to take that challenge, don't we? And this is not intended for me to bash you on the head or anything like that. This is intended for us to grow closer to God. And I want to start this morning with quite a simple question. What are you like at being ready? What, 
for whatever is coming along your way. What are you like for being ready? It's usually at this point, uh, husbands and wives will look at each other. I've seen a couple of you do it. And now nudging the other one and going, I'm okay, but you're not. If Vicky was here, she would have made a comment of going, Lee, you are never ready on time. Ever. You know, it's a miracle if I'm ever ready on time. But... Being ready for a day or something that's ahead of me, I'm quite good at. In fact, I have to have it planned in my head. I'm one of those people that go, okay, I'm going to get to church at this time, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I need to do this by that time. And if it kind of doesn't quite work out, it sort of throws me, because I sort of plan everything in my mind. Um, Just on Friday, my other job that he says to me, do you fancy coming in an hour later next week just to experiment? And I'm going, yeah, that's fine, that's, that's good. Um, we try that out. But the more I think of it, the more I go, oh, that blows my mind. That blows my mind because I'm a routine sort of person. I'll get used to it, but you know what I mean? I actually, and this is, I've said this before, uh, but for some of you, this might be the first time you hear it, and this might shock you, but this wonderful fit man in front of you. Oh, who laughed aloud this then, Sharon? (laughs) This wonderful fit man in front of you once ran the Birmingham Half Marathon. Not only ran it, I didn't collapse halfway through it, I actually achieved it and completed it. I know, it's a miracle, isn't it? And I, I managed to do it, but I got myself ready for it. I trained so hard. I would run each day and I started with a mile and just kept that going for a bit then two miles then three miles then four miles and then spent a week crying thinking why have I done this to myself and then a little bit further and so on and so forth I got myself ready for the challenge that was ahead of me equally I also think back when Daisy was born and many of you know she was nine weeks early we were unready and unprepared for that moment. I don't think you're ever fully ready, are you, or prepared really for, especially when your first child comes along. But to be nine weeks early, my parents actually had to go out and buy us a Moses basket. We didn't have one. Even if they let us home, we weren't ready. The neonatal unit, the neonatal Surrey classes, phoned Vicky and said, you weren't here this week, you signed up for it. And Vicky's going, no, I'm in hospital with the baby. That ship has long sailed (laughs) to go and get training. It's happening here. We just wasn't ready. We just wasn't prepared. I wonder what you're like about being ready and being prepared. Being ready and prepared is talked a lot about in the Bible in all sorts of different contexts. 1 Peter 3.15 talks about being ready to give an answer for what you believe. Proverbs 24 and 2 Timothy 4.2 all talks about being ready for when the harvest comes, when the right time is happening. But Jesus also called us to be ready. In Matthew 24, 36 onwards, Jesus is talking about being ready for his return. And in the same version which we're going to read in a moment, Luke 21, 34 to 36. So if you've got your Bibles, let's just turn to that, Luke 21, and we're going to read from verse 34 to 36. And he says, Be careful, or your heart will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness and the anxieties of life and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that has happened and that you may be able to stand before the son of man 
Amen. Just to quickly add some context onto what we've just read. The disciples have just commented to Jesus about this beautiful temple, this huge temple, beautiful temple, and said, what a beautiful temple this is. Look at it. Look at the work of it. It's an amazing temple. And Jesus does what Jesus does. And he says, there's a day where not one stone will be left upon each other in this temple. And so the disciples ask the obvious question, well, when will this happen? And Jesus goes on to mention many different signs, many different things that will happen. And that goes on for quite a few verses. And when you read it, it's not really that encouraging. And then, and only then, he says, will I come back. But he says in Luke, and most certainly in Matthew 24, 44, he says, so you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him now i'm sorry if i disappointed this moment in time but this is not a second coming talk it's not there are better people who could preach that the reality is this there's kind of not much to say on it in fact there's loads but for this point there isn't because the truth is it's going to happen he says there will be signs on the way. But he also says in Matthew 24, 36, but about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The reality is he gives mixed messages. He says there will be signs, but that's all they are, because actually no one knows the time. So he says, be ready be ready and that's what I want to look at this morning or actually I want to change it very very slightly and ask this question what would it look like if Jesus came now firstly we'd go I'm in church so I'm in a good place that's a good stuff you got away with it this week but what would it look like what would it look like for you what would God find in our hearts today? When I was nine years old, I became a Christian. And it was through two films. And some of the older ones amongst us might know these films. They played in a big marquee. I can't remember if they played both films or we came on two different days or what have you. Sadly, it was a long time ago. But the first film was Crossing the Switchblade. Many of you will know him, many of you will know the book, the amazing story of Nicky Cruz. And then the other film, I think it was called Thief in the Night. It, somebody's said yes to that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, thank you. And it's an amazing film about the second coming. And I'll be honest with you, it did nothing but scare the life out of me. I'll be honest with you, that is what he did. I battled for many years. I was completely scarred by this film, about the fear of it. Because as a nine-year-old, I was like, am I ready? What does it mean to be ready? I, I, am, I, am, I, am I ready? I got it in my head going, well, if it goes past nine o'clock at night, we'll be all right. I don't know why it just sort of made me feel better. Don't worry, my theology has changed since then, okay? But I was, I was worried. I was concerned. I'll be honest, as a nine-year-old, there were some days when I got a little bit older and I had an exam that day, I'm thinking, come on, Jesus, come along. Let's anything but do this exam. You know, I had this moment, and I sort of had this relationship with this thought of what it means to be ready. Because what does it mean to be ready? ready what does it look like if he comes again i wonder how he would find you how would he find me would he find anger in our hearts would he find bitterness would he find us rowing with people would he find us criticizing each other or criticizing the church or criticising God? Would he find laziness? Would he find boredom? Would he find us in sin? 
Would he find us distracted? Would he find us loving the world? Would he find us in worry? Would he find us with lack of faith? Would he find us with a lack of trust? Or a lack of hope? Or doubt? And the reality is, I could go on and on and on. But my prayer is that God is challenging each and every one of us at this moment when we think about this. Because I don't know about you, But especially this week, this has made me stop and think, how would God find me? I say again, this is not a judgment. This is not a bash on the head. It's a question. It's a thought. It's something you've got to ask yourself this morning. Are we ready? And what would God find? So how do we go about this? How are we ready? How do we get our lives around to how God calls us to be, even whatever is going on in our hearts? Well, we only need to look at the book of Luke. Firstly, in verse 34, which we've read, it says, Be careful of your hearts. So be careful or your heart will be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and anxieties of life. This is not just a verse about getting drunk. It's using the word drunkenness and dissipation, which I don't know even if I said that word right, which means in a nutshell, being hungover or squandering. It's using these these words as an example on being careful how we live our lives. I've never been drunk. I've never drank. I had an alcoholic father, as many of you know. I've lived in a rehab centre. When you go through those moments and you see it, you tend to avoid it. But that's the point. I've seen it enough times. As a postman when I was in Birmingham on a Saturday morning, it was always very interesting because I lived in quite a student area. If I was ever poor, go to Selly Oak in Birmingham on a Saturday morning because what happens is they try to get the keys out of their pocket, they're that drunk, all the cash flies up in the air and they just carry on. And it's all on the floor. There's loads of it. They leave the keys in the door and they're just not in a very good condition. But to be fair, it's not just even a student. When I was working at Royal Mail, there was a few that worked on a Friday, would go out for the night and then come back to work on a Saturday morning. If we ever needed to find them, you just had to go into the restroom and find them asleep on the pool table. That's what condition they were in. So I've seen enough of it to know that when we are drunk, when we are hungover, we're not at our best, are we? We're not achieving or completing the best that we can. And Jesus says, be careful, or your heart will fall into that trap. Your heart, if you're not careful, will fall in to the hangover of life. Proverbs 3, 24 to 27 says this, the verses we know well, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. No, I wouldn't say that word right. Keep correct talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. I've said this before here, but there's three important words to those verses. Above all else. Not some things, not a few things, above all else. We've just sung that song of me, Eagle's Wings. Live in my life, live in all of my life. Not just a moment, not just a bit, not just a couple of things, not just the things I choose, but all of it. Above all, 
Guard your heart. It's not a suggestion. It's not a helpful bit of advice, which obviously it is. But it's above all else. Above everything, be careful of your heart. That we don't let our hearts become drunk or hungover or squandering. Fall into the distractions of the world. But keep your eyes upon him. Which leads me to the second thing that it says in Luke 24. At the start of verse 36. Be always on watch. Once again, we often assume this is to do with the signs and the wonders that Jesus has been talking about. And in one sense it is, but in another sense it isn't. We know that Jesus has said this later on as well. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he uses a similar saying in Matthew 26, 38. He says, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. It's not watch over me, keep watch with me. Jesus is watching. He encourages the disciples to watch. And of course, when Jesus says this, at this point, it's when the disciples have fallen asleep. He says it to them a couple of times. They keep falling asleep. They've become unaware of the dangers that they are facing and what they are approaching them. In moments, their lives are going to change forever, and they are not alert. They're not watching. They are literally a little bit drunk, because obviously they've just had the wine and stuff and the food, but also they're, they're metaphorically not watching and drunk in life. The translation of watching can be translated to this. Consider, be mindful, be careful about, exercise care, caution, restraint, be aware of, pay attention, take into account, consideration, bear in mind, keep in mind, attend to, pay heed to. I think the clues are very much there when Jesus says, keep watch. Jesus tells us to be watchful. And as one person described, as I read this week, it's like being a night watchman. Because a night watchman has to be extra alert than a day watchman. Of course a day watchman has to be alert. Of course they have to look out. But they have the cover of daylight. They can see a bit further. Than, but a night watchman can't. It's dark. They have to use all of their senses. They have to use all of their skills. They have to be completely alert. And Jesus calls us to be electric, electric, extra alert. But to what? Well, let's remember the question we've been asking. What would it look like if God came now? Would we be ready? And I listed many things on how God could find us. And I wonder how God is challenging you this morning. And I wonder if God has challenged you on a few things and you've gone, I didn't even realise that was particularly in my life. Maybe you've been challenged or God is challenging you, moving you on something and you're going, but I wasn't aware that was a problem. Maybe he's challenging you on something that you are more than aware of, but maybe it's something you're not aware of. As a pastor, I tend to panic if someone's not at church for two or three weeks in a row, unless you're on holiday or something like that. And I tend to panic because I've seen this so many times, and I'm sure Joel will back me up on this, seen this so many times when suddenly that becomes the norm. It becomes the habit of not coming. And it panics me. Because it's amazing how quickly something can become the norm. Something can become the rhythm of life. And that's what happens in whatever God is challenging you on. Or whatever is happening in your lives. If we don't watch out for it, the more, and we don't guard our hearts against it, the more it could sneak in and it become normal and we've not even realised it. And so Jesus says, keep watch. 
Keep alert to those things of the world that maybe are in your hearts or in your lives and you've not even realised it. So then the next question has to be, what do we do about it? Luke 24 and verse 36, we've heard the start of it, be watchful, but he goes on to say this, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Simple. Be prayerful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. You know, if God is revealing things to you this morning, be thankful. I know that's a strange thing to say. You might be sitting there, and I hope you're not, and it's never my intention, but you might be sitting there feeling guilty or feeling really down on yourself because you've suddenly realised this norm is in your life that shouldn't be there, and God is challenging you. Give God the glory. He cares about you so much, he's challenging you. He's challenging you and saying, look, this is here, but you can do something about it. And firstly, give thanks to me. You know, on um, Tuesday, uh, no, Friday, we had our prayer meeting here, and we did it slightly differently. We played some worship songs. We played awesome gods, and I exalt thee. And before we prayed into anything, we just spent time giving God glory, giving God thanks, giving God praise. And we often do that, but we were able to do it slightly differently. And it was great. And we just said, we're not going to give a list of things to pray for. But what we're going to do is just let God guide us. And he did. He directed us to pray for people. He directed us to pray over a church and the community and give him thanks and all of these different things. You see, when we come to God in prayer, he guides you. When we come to God in prayer and give him thanks... He's there. He's with you. He will help you. Devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. And of course, or I say often, be still and know he is God. You know, sometimes it's listening to the answers. So often we can... A conversation, ever had a conversation with a person you can't get a word in edgeways? It's not a conversation, you're just listening, aren't you? You know, that's not a conversation. A conversation happens when two people are talking. God's talking. You know, sometimes we go, I don't hear him. Stop. Be still. Know he is God. Because I can guarantee you this, he's talking. But the question is, are we listening? If you don't know what to pray, if you're not sure how to deal with what God is challenging you with, can I encourage you? Find a quiet room, sit there, put Spotify on and play a worship song, and then just be still. And say, Lord, help me. He never lets you down. He never will. Never has done. Never will. This is not a talk that is intended to fill you with fear, like I was as a nine-year-old boy. It's not intended to say, you're not ready. Because I don't know. Because the only people that can answer the question is you. But my encouragement is that you will ask that question, you will allow yourself to be challenged, you will give God glory because he's challenged you, and you will act upon it. Let's just spend a moment in prayer. 
Let's just quiet our hearts before him. I don't know what God is doing in your heart. I know what he's done in my heart this week. I have a rule, never preach something that I'm not prepared to allow myself to be challenged in. And I've challenged myself this week. I've asked, Lord, am I ready? What are those things in my life that's become a norm that I've not even noticed? And whatever he is challenging you on this morning, don't feel guilt, don't feel shame, don't feel worry about it. Give him thanks because he loves you to challenge you. Spend time with him. Lord, challenge us this morning. Change our hearts. Forgive us, Lord, for those things that have become a norm. And we are truly sorry. But Lord, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. And say, Lord, change it. Help us to change it. Help us to be more watchful. To be aware and alert of those things that come our way which we try to allow or, or not notice and come into our lives. Help us to be watchful and alert to those things, Lord. Help us to be careful and to guard our hearts this morning, Lord. And help us to never give up praying to you, Lord. Challenge us. Equip us, renew us, restoring us today, we pray. And above all, we give you thanks that you care for us and we love you and we give you praise this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sharon.